Hello everyone, welcome back. We've been working on recursion. And when we last left off, we were uh, I showed you how to do fractal trees using JavaFX inside of IntelliJ. And so what I'm actually gonna pick up today is showing off some of the work that got done. If you are in the Discord, maybe you have seen some of this. <clears throat> but the students really just went wild with it. They, they took it and ran, and I love some of the stuff that we got. Let's take a look. Uh, I'm going to try not to mention names, but there's some cool stuff that came out of this, right? This one, uh, I believe it's just like straight up like 90 degree angle turns, that sort of thing. Here is uh, playing with the color fade, which this one wasn't intended from my knowledge, my understanding, but I actually really like the way this turned out. This is super cool. This is the look that we were trying to go for, right? When I left off, I was talking about a fade be able to go from one color to another. And there was a lot of conversation in the Discord on how to do that. It's, it can get very mathy, basically because you want it to fade, but you don't want it to do, you, want, you don't want it to go super quick. Um, here, <laughs> we were trying to, um, I guess, max out our RAM and go as deep as possible on these fractal trees. And the last one that I want to show you that really showed up was an actual video, which was animating the fractal tree, right? In theory, you could do this with like uh, some type of slider where you just play with the length. That's uh, that's uh, one of the ways that I was trying to go towards the end uh, when I was playing with it offline, which was adding a slider to the JavaFX, which adjusts the length, but then it needs to update in real time, right? Um, so. That's pretty cool. Really like what y'all did with that. Today we're picking up just some coding bat. We're basically just practicing, finishing out with some coding bat up until um, our test. So first one we're gonna get started with is pair star. So let me hop back to recursion one. Oh, I'm gonna tell it to forget this bad boy. And under recursion one, what are we doing? Count pairs? What did I just say? Pair star. forget this one while we're at it uh, pair start so let's make this sure this looks pretty good given a string compute recursively a new string where identical chars that are adjacent in the original string are separated from each by an asterisk so this one's kind of interesting I'm looking for adjacent characters but the thing is is like I don't know they're adjacent until kind of after the fact so the only reason why I say this is interesting is because the typical structure that we've been going is that we've considered one character at a time in our string and then we cut it off and get rid of it. If we kind of do that though, how do I know that two are adjacent? So I'm gonna have to consider two characters at a time before I completely crop them off. Okay, so um, as we've talked about, we're gonna look at one character, get rid of it, get rid of it, get rid of it up until the point that we don't have any characters at all. So I'm going to kind of plug that in as our base case. That's the way I've been handling these, is that I start with this base case whenever we're considering strings. I'm assuming that we'll eventually reach zero, at which point we stop. Now we're gonna see there's a lot of catches in that, but that is a good starting place. So if I have no characters, we're gonna stop there. If I'm still here, that means there's some characters to consider. I need to know, do I have pairs of adjacent characters, right? So if, and again, we could go from either end, I highly recommend going from the beginning, if str char at zero is equal to the one next to it. Some of you, some alarms should be going off. Um, Yes, we're going to have to have two characters. Again, we'll come back to this. I like looking at the logic first and then figuring out the niche scenarios after that. So if these two characters are the same, what I want to do is basically return the char at zero along with an asterisk and then the char at one, right? And then, so let's do that. So I'm going to return whatever char at zero is I'm going to tack on an asterisk, and then we will, 
I see it. Full return char at one along with it. That should be effectively the current character followed by an asterisk and then the character after that. And in my mind, I have considered two characters here. The very first character and the one next to it. So I should be able to, in my recursive call, chop off two characters. Okay, that's my thinking. I just dealt with two characters. I don't need them anymore. As we're going to see, that's a bit of a hiccup. But that's my thought process. I've just considered the first character. I consider the one next to it. We can chop off those two characters and keep going. If I'm still here, what it means is the first two characters were not the same. So there's no reason to separate them with an asterisk. I just want to keep going. I want to keep the current character as it is, but I don't want it in my recursive call. All right, this recursive call has to approach the base case. So I will take the string and chop off the first character. And so this is what I'm going to kind of start with. And you see, we got issues. For one thing, we're going out of bounds. We see we get a string index out of bounds, range of one, and that should make some sense. The reason being, well, in order for this statement to work, I have to have two characters. But my base case is saying that we can get all the way down to no characters. What that means is at some point, my string has got at least one character, but not two. And that's a problem. So if I update this, if we have only one character left, there's no way we can have a pair. So instead of this being equal to zero, I'm gonna say it's less than or equal to one. So that helps my index out of bounds, but notice we got some more issues. All right, I got a little bit of issue here. I got an issue here, interesting. So what happens is our string has four A's. So I see the character at zero is equal to the character at one, okay. So I put an asterisk in between them. Character at zero, asterisk, character at one. I then get rid of these two characters. So then I'm left with AA. But if you look at the output that they want, this is a pair. This is a pair that needs to be considered. So, Whenever I have back-to-back -back characters that are equal, I can't chop off two characters. I can only chop off one. Hmm. Still interesting. What are we doing here? Oh, hold on, incoming. We have a special guest star. Mess up the green screen. Are you good? She's coming back. Oh, she may be about to type a little bit. You want to solve this coding bat? She's right here, I promise. <laughs> she is just in front of my monitor. Hi, uh, we're live streaming to the world. Can I get you something? You want some a fish? I ate the cookie from earlier. So, oh, she's typing now. There you go. That's cool. Yeah, okay. Okay. So that's what life is like uh, with a cat. <laughs> Um, back to our problem, which is wrong. <laughs> coding cat, yes, coding bat has been reformed. Okay, uh, well, so what's happening here? I need some help. I need some help. All right, if our string length is less than or equal to one, then I can't do this, but, hmm. You're saying I don't need to do this. If I am going to get rid of the first character, there's no reason to even consider the second one here. That doesn't sound right. All 
I'm looking. I promise I solved this like eight minutes ago. It's progress. Worked for me. Thinking. Yeah, what am I doing? If it's less than one, right? If there's two characters, I still need to check them to see if they're the same, right? The two characters could appear at the very end. So the base case has to be right. Return, ah, uh, yes, that makes sense. Um, I want to bring this back. I, I forgot to update this with our base case. So if there's exactly one character, I need to return it as is and not just an empty string. Uh, this does work. I'm curious. Yeah, that's that's got to be it. Okay. So, sorry about that. Um, I'm going to blame the cat on this one and not my inferior intellect. So one thing I want to point out is that these two return statements, oh boy, they're very similar. So one thing we can do is bring in the use of a variable, as I've shown you with a, with a couple of other ones. And so why don't we bring in some type of string that we plan on ultimately returning? And initially, maybe it's just this character. Okay. Now, this would give me a problem because right now I'm trying to save a character into a string variable, and those aren't the same. Little trick that I have shown you before, hopefully, is that if we concatenate it with an empty string, right? this isn't going to change the value. But adding a character, adding anything with a string, this concatenation, is going to force a conversion. And so it's going to turn this character into a string without changing it. That is the easiest way to do some type of string conversion. Okay, So maybe I start out with this variable, and it's just the current character. Instead of returning all of this, what I'm going to do is, if this is true, if the first two characters are the same, I'm going to update RTN. I'm going to add to it just an asterisk. What that means is when I get down here, I'm going to return RTN and then do my recursive call. Now it's possible that RTN didn't change, right? If the first two characters aren't the same, then this just is the first character. However, if the first two characters were the same, it's the first character along with an asterisk. Ta-da! Bring in ternary. We're going to pass on the ternary operators right now as you just saw me goof up on this silly uh, coding bat. Let's go to the next one, though. End x. Give it a string. Compute recursively a new string where all the lowercase x chars have been moved to the end of the string. Okay, typical string stuff. We're going to consider one character at a time, and then we're going to delete it, which means that eventually, I think we go a little bit bigger there, eventually we're going to run out of characters. So if our string length is zero, I'm going to return nothing. Again, I like to start with this kind of as my base case and then make changes. So let's check the current character. If the character at the front of the string, again, checking the front should be the easiest, is an X. Notice that I'm making a character comparison here, character to character, or chars in this case, and I'm using the equals relational operator. So if the first character is an X, what I want to do is move it to the back. Ideas on how to do that? As we've been seeing with our other stuff, right? whenever we do our recursive call, this puts it up front. It really is as simple as flipping this order. Rip, rip progress. If our length is equal to zero, we'll return nothing. However, if the first character is an X, I want to do a recursive call and then tack on the X, right? So we're going to do end X. I just considered the first character. I want to get rid of it. So we'll do a substring. 
where we uh, get rid of the first character. Then we tack on our X character. Now you could use char at zero here, but at this point we've already verified that's an X, and so I could just tack on X. Now here I'm using a char, and this is supposed to be a string, but keep in mind anytime we take a string and add it to a char, we're going to get a string back. So this will do the conversion for us as well. If I'm still here, what it means is the first character wasn't an X, but I did consider it already, so I need to get rid of it. We're going to just return uh, the character as it stands, and then put our recursive call, and X, uh, getting rid of the first character. Sweet. Now this one, this would be a little bit trickier to try to bring in a variable. The variable would end up being more work than, than it's worth. It, it, would, it wouldn't really help us at all. Uh, what I would like to do is actually trace this, right? We should have maybe traced the last one, but let's get like a call stack going. And so I'm going to just take one of these and how about right here? Let's trace this. Now the reason that I end up doing the tracing, guys, is that in some type of testing situation, in theory, on your AP exam, although this stuff is not on the AP exam anymore, in theory, your AP exam, what, you'll have a multiple choice question where you need to, um, you need to trace it, basically. You're never writing code. So, you're never writing recursive code. So let's trace this. We're going to ask, is the length equal to zero? No. Is the first character an X? Ooh, it is. So what I'm going to do is put a recursive call in the stack, end X, and we're going to take a substring of str, getting rid of the X, so it is just this. Plus, then the X character goes on it. Let's step inside this recursive call. I'll ask, is our length equal to zero? It is not. Is the first character an X? It is not. Okay, we're going to return H. Apparently Google heard me. We're going to return H along with our call to end X. Again, getting rid of the first character. Okay, here I have code waiting to be executed. I'm going to step inside that call. We're going to ask, is our string length equal to zero? It's not. Is our first character an X? It's not. So we jump down here where we're going to put our first character along with a recursive call onto the stack. And we're going to get rid of the first character. Here I have code waiting to be executed. So let's step inside that recursive call. We're going to ask, is our length equal to zero? It is not. Is the first character an X? It is. So we're going to put a recursive call on the stack for index, getting rid of the first character along with an X. Okay, we'll step inside this call. Is our length zero? Nope. Is the first character an X? It is not. So we're going to take the first character and then put our recursive call onto the stack. Let's step inside this one. Is our length zero? Nope. Is the first character an X? Nope. So we're going to put the first character onto the stack along with a recursive call. Okay, let's step inside here. Is our length zero? Nope. Is the first character an X? Yep. Oh, what's happening? Okay, um, so we put a recursive call onto the stack where we do end x with a substring of one that gives us an empty string along with our x. Let's step inside this recursive call. We're going to ask, is our string length zero? Yes. So we return nothing. Uh, <laughs> what's happening? I just fat fingered my entire lesson. Okay, it was what index nothing along with our x, right? And then we have nothing. So, 
This is the height of the call stack. Right? I can start solving this stuff. I know what this is. When we have index with nothing, well, our string length is zero, so we return nothing. Just an empty string. Okay. Notice I have a string being added to a character. Well, this is going to force a conversion. It's going to turn this X into a string. What this evaluates to is simply X. It is a empty string plus X. This string is empty, so it doesn't actually change the value here, but because it is technically a string, a string with a length of zero, it's going to force a conversion. Now notice here, I have a character along with a string. This is again going to force a conversion. It's going to convert this whole thing to a string. So I end up with IX. Character string. This turns into HIX. Oh. Got a string with a character. I can solve this. This is going to be HIXX. Character being added to a string. So we have I H I X X. Character along with a string. Probably easier to copy this bad boy at this point and say that and I'm not doing this the most efficient way possible. And then lastly, I have this string being added to this character. So we tack that on to the end. And there we go. There is our recursive call stack. You see that it stacks up. And the last thing to actually be executed, last thing to actually be added is the first thing that we executed. Let's go to the next. This is the, yeah, lecture should start at 2.30, right? I just paced it out 45 minutes instead of an hour. Count pairs. We'll see that we'll say that a pair is a string in a string is two instances of a char separated by a char. Makes sense. That's what a pair has always been. Said no one ever. So AXA is an obvious A pair, and they can overlap. Right? So we actually have three pairs here. We have A in A, and we have A in A, but we also have X and X. Okay, recursively compute the number of pairs in the given string. As always, we're gonna look at one character, we'll get rid of it. What it means is eventually we'll run out of characters, so our string length would be zero. So if our length is zero, I'm gonna return zero. Of note, we're counting here. We have a return type of int, and so I'm spitting back out an integer. I'm going to start with that as my base case. I don't know if we're going to change. I don't even remember. I solved it a few moments ago. I don't know now. I'm stupid. I'm going to start with this, and then we'll make adjustments if we need to. What I'm going to do is look at the current character and look at the one two characters away. If str char at zero is equal to one that's two characters away. Hopefully some alarms are going off. We're going to need like three characters for this to even work, and that's okay. But I'm going to make a comparison between those two characters. If they are the same, what I want to do is count that as a pair. So that counts as one pair, but we want to keep going. So I'm going to add that to, and then we have a recursive call. Now I just considered what looks like about three characters, one character, space, one character. But it's possible even with this example, right? What we just did is we compared this character to this character. And in theory, I just considered these three. So one thought may be, let's get rid of those three. But this is a perfect example where we see there's actually a pair that could happen with the very next character. So I don't want to get rid of three characters. I only want to get rid of one. Right? So the next recursive call 
it's just looking at this string, asking, is this character equal to the one two characters away? So whenever I put this recursive call onto the stack, I'm only getting rid of one character. If I'm still in the method, what it means is there were characters, but they weren't equal. I'm going to count that as a zero. You could return zero plus, but as we have seen with previous counting ones, if I do, if I add nothing, it's effectively the same thing. All right, we're going to try this. We're going to have issues, and that's okay. You see, you got a bunch of string index out of bounds, two, two, two. The only thing it worked on <laughs> was when we had nothing. Sweet, we're programmers. Okay, so what happened here? Well, in order for me to check the character at the very beginning to see if it's equal to the one that's two characters away, I need at least three characters for that to work. What it means is if I have two or less, then I can't possibly have a pair, as they have said. Right? A pair has to be at least three characters. So if there are two or less characters, we got no more pairs. We're going to return zero. Ooh, we got a star. Ready? Last one. Count ABC. Count recursively the total number of ABC and ABA. Substrings that appear in the given string. All right? This has ABC, so there's one. This has ABC, ABC, so that's two. And then there's ABA and ABA, so that's two. Hmm. Okay. Similar situation. We got our string. We're going to consider one character at a time. Eventually, I'm going to run out of characters. Again, I like to start with this as my base case and then look to modify for these string recursion problems. If there is nothing left, we're going to return a zero. What I need to do now is look for a substring. It's worth it to use substring here because I'm looking at three characters. Another approach is to ask, is this one an A? Is this one a B? Is this one a C or an A? I'm not a big fan of that. That looks, that seems kind of messy to me. So with that in mind, I'm going to have to check for ABC, but I'm also going to have to check for ABA. I want to know, do three characters equal ABC or do those exact same three characters equal ABA? What that means is I'm basically going to be calling substring twice to get the exact same string fragment that I want to check. So with that in mind, what I want to do instead to maybe make it a little bit cleaner is let's go ahead and pull out that three character substring and save it into a variable. This will clean up some of our statements so we don't have to do this twice. Right? It's technically uh, saving us some processing power at the cost of space. That's okay. If check is equal to ABC. Something of note, a lot of the previous problems we were looking at, we were using char at and making comparisons with characters. Don't forget, here I'm working with a string, so I'm going to use the equals method and compare it to another string. If those three characters are equal to ABC, or those exact same three characters are equal to ABA, Success, we have found one, All right? So here where it says check, it could have been that. Here where it says check, it could have been that. And I would have repeated myself twice. We would have cut the exact same substring two times and that is a little inefficient. So sweet, I have found one. So I'm gonna return a one to count it. And I just considered three characters. So let's chop them off, right? We'll put a recursive call into the stack and we'll do a substring beginning at index three. Seems easy. I dealt with three characters. I'm going to get rid of three characters and keep going. If I'm still here, well, the first three characters weren't ABC or ABA. So I want to keep going, but um, so at some point, like my string looks like this. 
I don't necessarily want to get rid of three characters. I don't want to necessarily get rid of two characters because eventually my string is going to look like this. I only want to get rid of one character. I know. Chat, listen. I'm stupid, but I'm not an idiot. Like, I'm a moron, but I'm not a dummy. If we're still here, it means my first three characters were not um, ABC or ABA. I only want to get rid of one character as we keep going. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. This guy's kind of an idiot. So we see some string index out of bounds exceptions. Oh, oh, she's coming back. <laughs> Your internet famous kitty. It's like all cats' dreams, right? Hey. You're so much more active in the afternoon than the morning. Hi. Hello. I'm just gonna, just, why don't you just sit in my lap? Just, okay. Okay. Oh, all right. Let's fix the green screen. <sighs> We're going out of bounds here. And part of the reason Probably the reason is I'm trying to cut a three character substring here. Well, as my string gets smaller and smaller and smaller, I'm checking to see if it's eventually zero. But the thing is, if I only have two characters left, there's no way that those two characters are going to equal this three character substring. So our base case needs to change, is the first drastic change I'm going to make. If we have less than or equal to two characters, what it means is. There's no way I could have ABC or ABA. And so we'll stop there. A simple adjustment to our base case should solve a lot of these index out of bounds issues. Apparently all of them. The only issue I have is this. And let's think about why. What I'm going to do is ask, is our string length equal less than or equal to two? It's not. So I'm going to cut a three character substring, those three bad boys right there. And I'm going to ask, are those equal to ABC? No. Are they equal to ABA? Yes. Sweet. So we're going to put one onto the stack, and then we're going to get rid of three characters, which leaves us with this. And hopefully you should see the problem. And this is kind of why I think they did this whole ABA thing. Whenever I find a string, whenever I find one, right, I don't want to get rid of three characters. At most, I can get rid of two. So... It's a simple change right there. We'll change that substring to a two. And voila. Okay. I want this, I want you to do this one. Count 11. This is your homework. Sweet. Let's chill. <laughs> 